Sochi Hamada is in many ways the uniting figure both behind the Mashiko Museum of Ceramic Art and Mashiko's pottery and ceramic industry. He was a pottery master who set up his workshop in Mashiko, Japan, an influential member of the Menge movement, and he was made Mashiko a place known for pottery around the world. So it is only fitting that our last stop at this museum is his old house. See, along with being a master potter, Hamada also restored old buildings and would relocate them to his property. These were farmhouses, storage buildings, and other buildings from the Edo period. This house, his house, that we're going to go see, was relocated to the Mashiko Museum of Ceramic Art in 1989. It's a Sunday. I'm surprised no one's here. Uh, okay. So here we have a look at the kiln. So with the pottery, the ceramics, of course, you had to heat it up um, to be able to change it from clay to ceramic. You can see here. I'm guessing that's where they put the they put the uh, uh, come on. Uh, they put the ceramics in there to heat them up, and it looks like the heat and the smoke came through those cracks there, and that's where they built the fire. Uh, yeah, hot, heavy work. Look at the pulley system they need. And then, uh, I'm guessing these are rejects. They look cracked and broken. No, they break sometimes. Uh, go. Okay, and then here we have, this is like the really, really traditional style kilns. So you see a few of these old kilns here in Mashako. Now, of course, back in antiquity, not even antiquity, um, not that actually long ago when you think about it, one of the big important things about pottery is, well, that was everything. That was your cups, your bowls, your vases. It was all made like this. So you can see, kind of. I don't really know if I'm allowed to go much further in here. I'm surprised I'm even allowed in here, and I might not actually technically be allowed in here and just wandered in. Um, so you take the wood over there, and you would start the fire in there. And there's these big air holes. Almost looks like you could put more food through there. And then they would feed up because heat rises, so it would go through the different chambers. It looks like there's three. There used to be five by the looks of it. Or maybe it's on the other side. Um, so the heat would go through. And I'm imagining they had some type of process where they took them from one to the other to the next to change the amount of heat that they're getting. Um, I don't know enough about ceramics. All right, and we got Hamada's old house. Oh, what's this historical marker for? The former Hamada Shoji residence main building. Good. Um, that looks like we can go in. So uh, I think I need to take my shoes off and go in because uh, we're here. That's probably the only reason this section's open. Here we are in Hamada's old house. Um, as you see, they didn't use glass, they used wax paper. Um, that's pretty common, especially for older buildings. Um, this house would have been old even for his time period. I think if I remember correctly, and I'll need to research this, if I remember correctly, he kind of bought this house and fixed it up and that that was a common thing that he did. He was very big into restoring old things, including buildings. Um, so this would have been your traditional fireplace. You build a fire in there, you have the kettle um, for making tea or cooking. Um, and a bit like a katatsu, for a long time it was where people gathered in the winter. It was the center of social life because it was warm. And that's where the food was. But most important, it was warm. Pretty complex roof with bamboo thatching. Of course, uh, smoke detectors, security cameras have been added. Uh, traditional loom. 
this would have been his kitchen. So you notice that uh, it's got some interesting blend of old and traditional and, well, I mean, still old for us, but, you know, for his time period, contemporary. So it's a very interesting mix. Uh, another old traditional style stove. Kind of neat, you can see the time periods. Um, you know, there's a lot of old houses in Japan that are just left abandoned, unfortunately, even though they're very beautiful, because, um, well, it's like an old building anywhere. It's expensive to maintain, it's hard, it's cold, and yeah, it, you know, putting electricity in and wiring, internet, that all becomes a pain. All right, uh, here we have what would have been more traditional fire pits, I think. I'm not sure, I'd have to ask about, oh, yeah. So you would have eaten there, put your legs under, you could put a blanket. I'm guessing just like a modern katatsu. Uh, in fact, uh, modern katatsu kind of came out of a version that used coals, which might have been uh, what this was for. Oh boy, that's a little close. This is why I have to watch my head when I go into old buildings, because I look like I'll make it. But I won't. Just a little too tall. Continuing our tour of the house. Nice shelving unit. It's actually kind of nice. But that's the thing is maintaining these old houses becomes a pain. So a lot of times, um, unless they're of historical significance, they are just left abandoned. Um, even going around Mashko, you can find quite a few old houses that are just kind of left abandoned, even more in Motegi. Um, a lot of them aren't even this old. Um, and that's the thing. A lot of those houses, they just don't know what to do with them, particularly in rural areas where the population is falling. So a lot of times those houses are actually really, really cheap. I think the bedroom's down there. Um, but... You know, a lot of times they need a lot of work. One of my uh, colleagues was talking about getting one. Um, and, you know, every so often he looks into it and, like, maybe looks at a few. And, but, you know, they're cheap, but a lot of times they're just not in good condition. This door's closed, so I assume you can't go in there. What do we got in here? Oh, uh, this would be the bedroom, bathroom over there. Yeah. All right, so here's a little more modern. You see you've got the glass panes. Ooh. Uh, yeah, no sneaking around this house, that's for sure. Either that or you'd learn every creaky floorboard. Board. Uh, in castles, sometimes that was done on purpose. They were called nightingale boards because someone sneaking in who didn't know the place wouldn't know how not to be a noisy mess. All right, pretty cool. It's got the kiln, it's got the house. I'm actually glad I came and took a look down here. Um, one thing I do like about Japan is the sliding doors. Really, sliding doors, sliding drawers, they're just a yeah, good overall. They save a lot of space. So I actually really like the sliding doors and, well, I guess you'd call it a sliding door still. All right. That about sums it up. Nice house, nice grounds. Um, it's Sunday, so maybe I'll go down and I'll check out the pottery market. Although, actually, I already bought uh, a mug today. Oh, that looks thick and sturdy. That's what Jen needs for hanging up all of her clothing. So at home, our pole in our closet you know, is supposed to look like this. It looks like this. It's like a U-shaped. All right. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned something. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up. Um, if you don't like it, tell me why in the comments. If you like what I do and the type of stuff I make, um, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. And I will see you in the next one.